Humankind has three basic needs food, water, and the unsuppressed urge to blow something up. And what better way to do that than to casually start a civil war on turn one, declaring war on every human faction and uniting the empire. Eh, kinda. So welcome back to Total Warhammer 3, where today we will be doing the Immortal Empires campaign and playing as the Empire. Not you, Volkmar, you're, uh, you're bald. No, we're going to be playing as Karl Franz over here, Mr. Warhammer Wielder himself. As the Emperor of the Empire, we are essentially in sort of in control of all of the land right here. So if I go into our Elector Counts tab, we will see that there is an entire thing, sort of like the Holy Roman Empire, or, uh, or the United States of America. America. Ah yes, I remember Balthazar Gelt, the governor of Texas. All around here are the different electors and leaders of the different areas of the empire. And what we're going to be doing is starting a civil war on turn one. So if I go up here to our imperial authority, imperial authority is essentially like how much do the elector counts actually think we can run the empire. With positive imperial authority, you know, we, we, get, we get some bonuses. When it's at zero, we have some pretty minor debuffs and those debuffs start to get worse and worse and worse until you get to minus 10 where a civil war happens in order to do this on turn one all we need to do is just declare war on a few empire factions and uh believe it or not they aren't very happy about that what I will do first, though, is just try and cheese a little bit of money. So we'll grab $1,000 from Midnend over here for a non-aggression pact. And then we'll see if we can just keep repeating that with Vizenland and Talbeka land. Right, so now that we've allied with enough people in the Empire, I can just come over here and declare war on them. As long as I'm declaring war with factions that we just don't quite have a treaty with, uh, no one really cares in terms of my reliability rating over here. But what you will see is happening is that if I declare a war, we are losing imperial authority for every war we declare. So because we've declared two wars, I can come over here and check it. Now we are at minus eight, and uh, that's a lot of debuffs. So if I go over to our army over here, you can see that we now have a worse leadership, and we have a whole bunch of penalties to our growth as well. But as soon as I come over here and I declare war to one more person, Mr. Valmir von Raukov, one more war will immediately plunge us into civil war. Your imperial authority is sunk too low, considering yours a rogue state. So now as soon as I go to our wars list, we are at war with every single elector. All those treaties that we just made about five seconds ago have now been broken by said electors and they have declared war on us. Although interestingly enough, when you hit minus 10 on the Imperial Authority, you actually don't have any of these negative debuffs. So now if I come back to our units, you'll see their leadership is back to normal and my growth is back to normal. Although the fealty of every single person in the empire is now zero, which means there is, there is no going back from this. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and fight our first battle against Helmut Ludendorff, who is essentially a random dude that has started a civil war against Karl Franz. Very poor decision. So we do need to fight this out manually, and by that I mean I'm going to really just deploy everyone as far away as possible, and then we're going to be using these borders to just kill everyone. We've also got Karl Franz himself, who is, I mean, he's kind of a badass. Also, if I stand Karl Franz next to someone else, you can see he he is, he is really tall. I mean, this guy is like borderline giganticism. Jesus Christ. Okay, actually, it turns out he is almost bigger than a unit of cavalry. Whatever off-brand Colombian supplements he's been taking, uh, where, where can I get them? So by starting the fight over here, our mortals will begin to pelt the enemy and, and pretty much miss every single shot. But for the most part, Karl Franz could just kite basically forever. And as soon as they get in range as well, we do start with a whole bunch of hand gunners who are beautiful units. Nothing like having realism in my video game by playing as one human faction and shooting the other with bullets. Well, while Karl Franz is over there showing them the meaning of sticking a sledgehammer in their bum, our cavalry are also just gonna charge their units over here and I don't, I, okay, that, that's a little bit excessive. At the end of the battle, we do need to chase down pretty much all of their units, which does include their lord, so that when we end the battle, their army is almost completely destroyed. And now that we've done that, we can come over to Grunberg and basically repeat the process to siege this whole city. Right, well, Karl Franz is gonna get surrounded, which really is, um... 
you know, it's who's surrounding who. And then we're essentially just going to repeat the previous battle by shooting everyone with guns. And as long as Carl Franz could basically just sit here and beat everyone down to death, which is, that's going to be a bit of a trend in this. Either way, now that we've won the fight, we could just go ahead and occupy Grunberg. And now we can take a look at our overall position and what we're trying to do. Because diplomatically, we are at war with all of the Elector Counts factions all over the place here in the Empire. Things are kind of bad. And our overall goal is to reunite the entirety of the Empire. So all these different factions that we are at war with, we've pretty much got to kill everyone. And surprise, surprise, being at war with the entirety of the Empire while surrounded by the entirety of the Empire is kind of bad. As soon as I end the turn and we just speed through all the different factions, we're going to get a scripted event, which gives us a battle wizard from Altdorf, which is fantastic. As well as we are going to immediately send Franz to siege Nuln, the capital of Vizinland. Now we can't actually win this fight, so I'm basically just going to continue the siege, try to build some random siege equipment, none of it matters, and then put the Bright Wizard into our army over here. Next, I'm going to recruit a second Lord over here, an Arch Lector, who is confident, and throw him right over here to begin recruiting even more units. Now we're going to once again end the turn, and I know that's not a very crazy turn too, but as soon as we get to turn three, th this is where things start to spiral out of control in our favor. Also, what what is that fireworks going on up there? What is happening? So just like clockwork, now Visitland is going to attack out on us, and we do have to manually fight out this battle, but it's not really a very hard one. Not normally hard. <laughs> as soon as we get into the battle, we can just go ahead and start, and we're going to be pretty massively outnumbered. As you can see, I think the number, yeah, we're, it's not great, but Carl Franz on his own, as we know, is worth about something like 300 pounds. Actually, this guy might be more than 400 pounds in his armor. He's also running like a track star over here. He's about to run that 10 kilometer race in full plate armor. A Roy Wizard could do a little bit of goofiness. Yeah, just, just throw some fireballs at people as, as one does. And our mortars are also going to start to open fire. The AI also really likes chasing down horsemen. So they just, just sent four units casually to chase down by Rex Guard, which are going to completely outmaneuver them anyways. All right, now that Carl Franz has pretty much beat this guy into a pile of red paste, now we can just clean up basically most of the other units. Our cavalry have cleared up most of the cavalry, uh, and the Bright Wizard is just continuously flinging fireballs into people's faces. 228 kills from the Reichsguard. They didn't even take a single loss. They, they honestly, they just chased down routing units. Oh yeah, we also keep getting prestige, which is, I mean, really not very helpful. <laughs> it's supposed to allow us to influence the electors, but it doesn't end up doing that much when they're all at war with us anyways. Oh, wow, look at that. I can spend $500 to get plus one fealty of visit lit. I, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So as soon as I come over here and we just take no one, I can just auto resolve this pretty easily because the garrison is basically non-existent. Now I can occupy it and get access to another interesting thing. Going into my elector counts tab, now you will see this is open. There is no elector count of Visitland, partly because uh, we killed him. So that means that I can now appoint my own elector count, being the lord I had recruited last turn. This will give him the Visitland Runefang, which is a pretty solid sword, has a lot of good abilities, but more importantly, allows us to recruit the unique Empire unit. So each of the elector counts has their own unique gun. So here we have uh, Suitson's guns from the Talbekaland division. Apparently Festus has got his own his own thing. That's, that's cool. The Elector Count of Norland has a bunch of mariners, and so on and so forth. But Visenland, if I come over here, the Emperor's Wrath. What is the Emperor's Wrath, you might wonder? Uh, well, it's literally just a steam tank. It costs $972 to upkeep which is more than the entire army of this guy times two. But Jesus Christ, is it powerful. The reason this specifically works with Visenland and taking one of the Elector Count cities at the beginning of the game is because normally you do have to wait about 15 turns at the start of the game to get our original units, which is the Karabur Great Swords, which come from having Altdorf. But because we just straight up conquered the capital of Visenland, we get access to the steam tank instantaneously. So it is now turn three, and we now have access to arguably one of the best empire units in the game. And it is a special version of that unit as well. And now I have this entire Talbekaland army over here. Oh no, what am I gonna do? My army's only got four units in it. How could I possibly win this battle? Oh yeah, I know how. A big ass tank. So I'm just gonna have my Arch Lector and all of my units hide in the forest over here because it, it doesn't matter. And the only unit that's going to do anything uh, is the tank who has a, as you might imagine, uh, you know, can shoot cannonballs. 
And the steam tank is actually really, really fast, so I can use it to get away from just about anything. Uh, and on top of that, it also has a secondary weapon on top of it, which could shoot out giant jets of steam. So although we're gonna get surrounded over here, the steam tank can, can just easily roll through anyone. It doesn't even matter. I can also use my special ability, which causes a massive explosion. And look at that, they're already terror rounded. Now, ranged units are a bit of an issue. As you can see, their uh, their crossbow are doing quite a number on us, but it's it's really not that bad. We could just keep kiting around, and anytime we would get surrounded, we just blow up the entire area and kill everyone. And because I believe the secondary ammo of the steam tank, the actual steam launcher, has infinite ammo, we could just keep running around and kiting them into oblivion. The enemy is also trying to look for our lord of the map. You can see all their units have scattered every which direction, but he's he's just hiding in the woods right there. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, the steam tank has a couple of unique abilities, so this is one of the unique abilities, the fact that it just blows everyone away. It also blows up if it dies, which shouldn't be all that surprising. Steam tanks are also completely unbreakable with 100 leadership. They will never route. It has perfect vigor and can break down walls. My arch has also just been camping in the trees, giving 24 melee attack to these swordsmen, as well as a pretty huge ward save, essentially turning them into the equivalent of, like, great swords for extremely cheap. And all right, we made it to win that. I actually kind of lapsed in my micro a little bit on the steam tank, but either way, it wasn't really that bad. It got 500 kills. Yeah, the only thing I did that entire fight was just run over infantry and, well, you know, cast steam tank, giving us another settlement at the ripe turn of, I think, turn four? Or wait, no, is this still turn three? Yes, yes, it is still turn three, and now we have four cities. We were also able to level up our Bright Wizard to get the Burning Head, which means that both of our armies are going to have some pretty solid AoE, plus an Arch Lector has an ability called a Grand Soul Fire, which basically just obliterates everyone in an area. Something else I can do is going into our Electoral Machinations. Now I can start using this Prestige in order to influence the various factions in the the Empire. Now, normally what you would do is improve the relations between you and someone else so that you can confederate them more easily. What I'm going to do is find two people that already don't really like each other and then make them hate each other even more. And the best part is I can just keep using this as long as I have enough uh, prestige right here. So we can just stack that on a couple of times. And now the relations were trending to six uh, and now they're going to go to negative 233. The hope of this is to obviously try and get these guys to declare war on each other instead of fighting me. We can move down here and try and clear out more people. I, I was about to take Dawn Buff with an auto resolve, and then I realized, uh, hey there, Gelt. That's kind of scary. Oh, 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 oh my god. I wasn't even saying anything because I just figured they would dodge the burning head that I just cast, but Jesus, did that just destroy half their army. There we go. And this is why we recruited a Bright Wizard. Also, it seems like they made the mistake of leaving their back line basically completely undefended. And more importantly, Importantly, their, their Hunts Marshal is over here just getting absolutely pounded by Franz. All right, great. Now we've taken the city. Uh, you know, we're just going to spare our fellow Empire citizens. Now we can just take the city over here and try and hold off against Balthazar Geld, who is probably going to be coming over here and trying to beat our ass in the next three seconds. Okay. And, you know, I, I wasn't expecting um, a whole other reinforcing. How, how do you even have this many units by, like, turn four? You you know what? Doesn't matter. We're still going to win, I think. So if I select control large army here, the enemy won't be able to get all of the reinforcements in at the same time. So we can try and fight 20 v 20 for at least a little bit. So what I will try and do is deploy all of my guys in the forest over here. As soon as the battle starts, I have my siege crews drop their siege engines to become hidden. And then we have to somehow circle around with our cavalry in order to fight off successfully their artillery. Although for the time being, I've just deployed all all of my garrison units in a big line to try and draw the aggro. As a matter of fact, that might just waste all their ammo now that I think about it. So I'm just gonna fast forward here. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try and juke a... Okay, this, this is gonna take about 20 minutes. Well, I hope you're in it for the long haul. And by that, I mean, I hope you're in it for the really awesome time lapse that's about to be done by my editor. Whoosh! Oh my god, okay, I wasn't sure if I would be able to get close enough to do this, but I'm getting my Bright Wizard just right up to their army so that I could try and cast a Burning Head all along their line. I'm hoping this doesn't aggro all their units, but okay, it, it just went the wrong way. That's that's cool. Good work, Burning Head. You've, um, you did literally nothing. All right, Burning Head number two. Will this one do a little bit more? Um, 
Well, I think it will. Okay, now this is the kind of action I was hoping for. It's not gonna get any kills right now, but the amount of damage, oh, Jesus, that, that went straight down the entire line. That might even hit more units right at the very end. All right, unfortunately, it looks like we might have aggroed their units just slightly. Oh no, don't chase my defenseless bright wizard. Whatever can I do? I have no idea what Gelt's army is doing. They've been, they've been just like doing the, the jamboree over here for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm probably just gonna end up casting another burning head on their side. They're gonna start to get less and less good because the, uh, the army is getting more spread out, but either way, it is a really efficient use of our winds of magic. Okay, this has required a lot of tryharding from my part, but we are slowly getting there, I think. All right, Franz is just coming back here to put the beat down on Gal on Gelt over here. I Unfortunately, you gotta do what you gotta do when you've accidentally, uh, on purpose, plunged your whole country into a civil war. Okay, what is Gelt made out of? We have just been beating on him for the better part of like 10 minutes and he is still not even close to dead. It's almost like he's made of some kind of metallic material. Wait, no, he has 30 armor. No, he's not. Wait, we what? Wait, what? They still had their entire army left. I don't know how we won that. That was a bit of a, a goofy, a goofy battle, but you know what? Not gonna complain. Now we're gonna chase down about 500 routing units and uh, surrendering soldier, I think you mean prime target. 587 kills on the ranks guard. Wait, we just got mortars? Wait a minute, I didn't even know that was a mechanic with the Empire fighting other Empire units. Goes to show you how much I have played the Empire or any human faction in any game. I'm more of a rat person uh, or a lizard person or a dwarf person or a goblin person or a robot person or an undead, you know what, really just anyone. Also, why, why do I still getting advisors? I have like 600 hours in this game. So defeating Gelt's army has given us plus six armor for our entire army, which is actually really, really good. So with Franz's army, now we can come over here and try and finish finish off the what? remainder of the Empire armies. I probably shouldn't auto-resolve that because uh, at this point in the campaign, auto-resolving is very, very bad, but I also just want to take out all the armies guaranteed. We should be able to then move straight into Visenberg because I'm pretty sure these orcs just sacked it last- Yeah, wow, they just sacked it last turn. So thanks for the free city. And Visenland is dead. Well, if my Imperial authority wasn't already minus 10, it would somehow go to negative from that. Oh no, another massively unfavored battle. Unfortunately, uh, you don't have hair. Actually, neither do I. But I do have a giant tank. All right, and like last time, we're gonna abuse the absolute crap out of this steam tank over here to roll around and hopefully kill this entire army. All right, well, the Arch Lecter's just been fighting here in the forest, and I mean, that is why we keep bowling him up into a group so that he can keep using Grand Soul Fire. Excuse me, guys, coming through. Just, just pardon me real quick. Let me just, uh... I'm so glad that the steam tank has such massive, well, mass, such that it can roll through just about anything like this. I'm also extremely impressed in my Arch Lecter over here who has been grinding through, what, 190 kills, 158? Actually, they have vastly more kills than the Steam Tank. Just because I've been giving them all the Arch Lecter buffs and the Soul Fires over and over and over again. Of course, as soon as they got wise and started to attack my Lord, the Steam Tank could just come in from behind and, oh, I might not have mentioned it, but this thing does terror route people. There we go. Finally, after 40 minutes of kiting around with that Steam Tank, we win. That was disgusting. Disgusting. I feel like I need to go take a shower after that one. All right, so by turn five, we have what? Four, five, six, seven cities, and we'll probably get another one next turn. Another two next turn, actually, because we're going to try to eliminate Balthazar Gelt down here. Old Dwarf is kind of our weak spot right now. We're trying to get some big garrisons on it because it's going to get attacked a lot by the Northern Empire factions, most likely. But for right now, everything is pretty great. Well, great considering we just plunged all of humanity into a civil war, but I mean, sucks for the rest of humanity. Oh, Midland just died. That's fantastic. Carl also keeps yelling at me to summon the Elector Counts. Like, brother, you do not want to summon the Elector Counts. They are well on their way. Also, why, why are there beastmen? All right, unfortunately, I got pulled down here to, well, pulled, I, I invaded these people. And that means we're gonna have to grind out the most awful thing right about now, where um, I'm gonna spend the next like eight years bombing this tower. The worst part is that I've tested this before and the AI mortars are too inaccurate to do this themselves. So 
Time for me to manually fire about 87 mortar shots into these ta- And I already missed the first one. God, this is the Planet Coaster video all over again. Quickly, Delta, keep the viewers engaged. I hope my volume isn't very weird because I'm using a, uh, a vertical desk that I have- uh, Vertical desk. No. Yes, I'm actually taped to the ceiling right now. That, that's why I haven't put any videos out. Sorry, guys. It's been a little tough getting down. All right. Tower one. Give it up for tower one. <laughs> I- Oh, I hate this. Oh my god, finally! Oh, Jesus Christ, we did it! And it only took me 33 minutes! <laughs> now I can move my mortars forward and begin the real strategy of bombing them for another 10 minutes. I can also use Burning Head over here and try and bounce it off the walls to hit multiple enemies. You can see right there, it, it, it's a very strange spell. Carl Franz is also just gonna beat down the gate himself. Okay, you know, now that I think about it, I have no idea why I spent like it was a 55 minute battle. It did not need to be. And I think I took more casualties doing it that way than I would have otherwise. Basically, they call me a genius because I pay them to. Either way, that means now we have access to Fife Dorf and another one of these uh, electric count provinces. So I can come down here and appoint another electric count here. And that'll give us another electric count unit for a bunch of uh, special spearmen, apparently. They don't look all that good. Um, and they cost $245. Whoa! They do have a cool name though, so I will uh, I, I will recruit them for that reason and that reason alone. Also, we're losing money. Um, that's gonna be a theme in this campaign. I just won't have enough armies to defend all the different areas that I need to defend, so inevitably we're we're gonna be losing money. Luckily, most of the factions that normally hate humans uh, are actually having improving relations with us, mostly because we are at war with every single human faction. Well, speaking of 55 minute battles, here's a 45 minute battle where I just kited around with my arch lector and a steam tank and then at the end of the game blobbed up all my infantry and used the arch lector's massive aoe buffs of all my melee attack grand soul fire damage resistance uh and basically a bunch of really really religious dudes with swords killed the whole army if i believe harder in my god than you believe in yours i basically already won now there's the thing i was kind of worried about kazarak sieging our capital okay i wasn't really expecting kazarak to attack and siege the city so uh, such that I, I literally auto resolve and his whole army dies and I got a free thousand dollar. We're pardoning the captives. There are so many things wrong with this interaction. I can pardon beastmen captives for money. Who's paying the ransom? I guess Kazarak's just gonna whip out his American Express Platinum card. Then buy his way to freedom. Bronze demanding that people bow before him and then everyone's like, Okay, sure. Unfortunately, peace is not really on the table. All right, finally, we're gonna be securing our starting province. I, I definitely can't auto-resolve the fight. I do really love that the Grand Empire strategy for most of the battles I'm fighting with Arch Lecters is just hide in a forest and then use ridiculously good buffs on all my units to make them unbreakable. Oh yeah, and a steam tank. That, uh, that too. Okay, and now time to play the real game. Just repeatedly casting a bunch of random buffs, a bunch of soul fires, and now we're gonna grind out about 1,351 people this way. All right, fantastic. And our arch lectors, actually our arch lectors didn't really do a whole lot of the work. It's mainly just our infantry grilling through units buffed on those holy juices. Actually, half this campaign reminds me of that ethereal snake animation with Jesus Christ. Get ready to receive some holy spirit. Spirit. What? <laughs> all right, great. So I, you know, I was going to say that it took us a while to secure all the provinces in our main area, but it is only still turn nine, and we've gotten most of the southernmost areas of the empire. My economy does still consist of about one dude paying taxes and everybody else hiding in the woods. Well, they're not hiding. They're just homeless. All right, Gelt, can you, can you go away? Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, he's willing to attack out and fight. Okay, now he's the leader of the army. Where did you materialize from, Mr. Goldface? Oh, wait, I just realized Balthazar Gelt is still on foot and so I think Carl Franz could just run in between the entire R oh you're you are done Gelt that gold Ussi is mine okay so apparently there's an undercity under Uber's Reich which uh you know for for historical reasons uh within the Warhammer universe is is kind of concerning I have played Vermintide before so uh I know what happens to this city either way I could just spend a little bit of money to destroy it but that's uh that that's still kind of scary 
All right, finally, Guild's faction is dead, and if we take a look at the broader area of the Empire, we, we, we do still need to secure the rest of it, but, you know, I didn't realize just how much I'd screwed everyone over by declaring war on the entire Empire. So if we're looking at the Elector Counts, the uh, the Elector Count of Midland is Kazarak One-Eye, of Talbekaheim is Festus, Vlad von Karstein's doing fine, and both of these Elector Counts are just dead. I mean, I would consider this a pretty big win for the Empire. Truly the ideal political system. On the bright side, the vampire counts actually like me for once. It's funny that I came into this assuming that the main threat of my faction would be all the empire factions I declared war with, but apparently the elector counts are so incompetent that they're the least of my concerns. Whoa, 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 <laughs> wait. Wait a minute, Averland is attacking my settlement here, and, and you know, this looks like it would be a complete rout on my side. They, they vastly outnumber me, they have better units, somehow the auto-resolve says this is a win. Honestly, not gonna question it. Total Warhammer 3 is definitely a broken game, but uh, when it's broken in my favor, I'm not gonna complain. And Oystermark is dead as well, that's that's great. Oh, and Marienburg is dead, okay, wow, pretty much all of the Empire factions are going downhill. Okay, and yeah, it looks like Kazra back to sieging Altdorf, and, uh, you know, just like before, I could auto-resolve a victory. I just killed him completely. I wish I knew what this man was doing, honestly. Oh, no. Vlad, come on. We, we could have had such a nice thing going. I was beginning to make those political reforms in the Empire, you know, like electing Festus as, as the Emperor. God, this is, this is so cursed. Wait, why is there a Chaos Dwarf caravan in Vertbrand? This, this, this campaign is so messed up. Well, right now I'm trying to clean out the southern part of the Empire, and we've uh, ended up fighting a pretty big Greenskin army. Luckily, all of their units is, um, one guy, and everything else is just reinforcements. Coral also got his Imperial Pegasus mount. Look at that. Look at all... Wait, that's a unicorn. But later, he will get his Deathclaw mount, which is extremely powerful. Ah, I love it when enemies reinforce right on the side of the map so that I get to do this. It's especially nice that I have my burning head ability and oh wow look at that. They're so nice that they've lined up exactly in line with where I would cast it. What helps a ton is that when the enemy routes they just immediately route off the field since the edge is right here. Whereas my units get a ton of time to run back rally and then they can come back into the fight again. Oh that's not very good. Heimrich Kemmler declaring war on us when I have zero armies on that side of the map. On the very bright side something about Empire uh, Elector Count troops is that I can't keep recruiting more of them. So that whole steam tank that's carrying a whole army, yeah, I could just get another one of them. Sure, it will literally destroy my entire economy. Um, I actually have to think about this one. <laughs> Well, you know, but if I don't destroy my economy, who will? Oh my god, I was looking at the Elector Count screen and I just noticed Heinrich Kemmler's picture over here. That man looks like he is inbred not once, but twice. Also, we are down to only two remaining Empire factions. Every other Elector Count has been killed at this point, either by me or by everyone else here. Wait, I just realized. So I caused a rebellion to happen at Kemperbad. I just, aban I just abandoned the settlement, Um, but I can now go over over to the Telbekalint army, which is about to die, by the way. And because they have a massive incentive to give me a peace treaty, I can just extort $5,000 from them immediately. And then they're gonna die next turn anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I do unfortunately have to fight Heinrich Kemmler over here in this fight. Oh, never mind. I guess Kemmler just dies, and it's not even close. Oh, wow. And, uh, uh okay. So I made peace with Telbekalint, and now they're immediately just gonna do this. Sure, lower my imperial authority even more. It it really doesn't do anything. There is a little bit of a thing with the vampire counts where you can see I defeated his army, but his guys resurrected. Uh, with some of the other lords, I think this happens a lot with Vlad, you could actually defeat one of the lords, the entire army resurrects, then attacks you again, and just keeps repeating that over and over in one turn. I don't remember if it got fixed, but holy Jesus, is it broken. All right, and now Telbekaland is asking for another peace treaty. It's been one turn, my dude. Also, I'd like to welcome everyone to the newest Elector Count, the Dwarves. Don't know why they decided to scoop all the ways to Carrollburg and take this city, but I guess they have. 
Oh, uh, hey, Durthu. What you doing there? I am going to choose to believe that Durthu is trying not to kill me. Uh, and instead, I am going to try and do this quest battle. It is against the Greenskins, and although the army doesn't look very big right now, I'm pretty sure they get a ton of reinforcements. I gotta say, whoever did Carl Franz's voice acting really knocked it out of the park. I, I mean, this guy sounds crazy. For Sigma! For the Empire! The it's unfortunate that Franz doesn't have his death claw yet. Oh, oh no, I, I don't really want to fight the, the war, war, war boss on a wyvern. Okay, they, they just shot a mortar and it hit Franz. I am impressed by that one. On the bright side, it looks like the war boss is just going to follow us straight into gunfire, which is pretty amazing. All right, the first wave got basically immediately flattened, and now we're going to have to deal with the sec. And I don't know how many enemies there are total in this fight, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's actually a lot. Jesus Christ, the Dwarven Lord is just getting pummeled around by the Arachnorox Spider. I mean, you know, just it's nice that the Dwarves have volunteered to fight the enemy basically on their own, because I haven't helped at all. All right, I think we're about to proc army losses here, just to kill this Arachnorox Spider. Franz and his little magical pony is pretty much giving it the wailing of a lifetime. Now he's just running straight up its all right so now that we win this battle we don't really have to worry anymore about it because we will get at uh, where are you come on i, I understand oh death deathclaw which is essentially carl franz's legendary mount and galmaraz which will turn carl franz from i mean he actually lost to a goblin shaman a couple turns ago. I didn't show it because it was it was pretty embarrassing. But now he is probably not going to lose to a goblin shaman. Nah, nothing like fighting about 1,500 undead with two units. And because one of them is a steam tank, I just win. Oh, thank God. So I just allied Bretonia, and I got really scared they were going to take Marienburg. Apparently, they just killed the entire garrison and left it alone. Kindness, which is, uh, you know, kind of off-brand for them. All right, never mind. I take it back they burn down the docks which make all the money okay well it's official there are no other electors literally all of the empire electors are either dead in exile or in prison or in vlad's case undead so the only factions we have left to take down are well i say only as if this isn't all of them i have eleven thousand prestige and i you know what you know I'm, I'm about to use this prestige right now the only two people who are alive and still friends are nordland and ostland look at that look at that they've got a whole bunch of trees They've got defensive packs. Oh, that is that is beautiful. Hey, you know, plus 52 treaties with Oslin. Minus 700. I love politics. Our next target is going to be Vlad over here. I mean, he doesn't seem that strong. I might just walk over to the settlement and get bulldozed. And by bulldoze, I mean obliterate them. You know, I am really confused. Most of my trading partners are from Cathay. And I don't even know how I know they exist. I mean, for reference, they're over here somewhere. And my faction is all the ways over there. All right. And time for the first real battle against the vampire. Empire counts. Actually, did I already fight them? Did I already show that in the recording? Oh god, I'm starting to go insane. <laughs> who, who am I kidding? Starting. I'll never not appreciate my boy over here, Hammerheim, who is giving himself something like 40% or actually 60% ward save at max and completely beating down a crypt ghoul over here just with his... Wait, he dual wields hammers? Well, I guess he's called Hammerheim. Of course, now my steam can can just roll through like no problem. The AoE it has is completely armor piercing anyways. Actually, Actually, I think I could just sit right here and then shoot cannonball. Wait, can I just manual fire this? Oh my god, I can. Well, time for me to sit here for the rest of the battle and just manual fire at and watch that corpse cart die. Oh my god, wait, is that Isabella von Ka Okay, she just she just got punted into another dimension. What is she doing? Oh, there she goes again. Right back into the crowd. I wonder if I could snipe one of these necromancers over here with the uh, the shots. Oh my god, the necromancers are just running back and forth. They know exactly what I'm trying to do. You can't stop me! Okay, maybe they can. All right, I should probably stop wasting my time and start realizing that, uh, oh, wow, we're we're actually completely winning this battle, and it's not even close. And now I'm gonna see if I can just come over here and run over these necromancers. And the answer is, well, sorry, guys. My people need me. <laughs> 
All right, great. That's going to be army losses over here, and fantastic. All right, we are going to lose this settlement over here to Vlad, which kind of sucks, but it's not really that bad. I keep getting this event over and over where the game wants me to spend prestige for Imperial Authority, not realizing that plus one Imperial Authority is actually a debuff. Because if we ever have more than negative 10, uh, we will have minus eight growth, minus four control, minus 10% income, minus five leadership. So ironically, it is better to be in a more anarchist state of the empire than a less one. I was expecting Vlad to attack Karl Franz over here, but apparently he's not really in the mood to do that. So instead, I should be able to fight my way out of this seat. Yeah, that was, that was not hard. And then come over here and probably just beat the absolute crap out of Vlad. So it's worth remembering that Vlad is a pretty scary boy. He has a ridiculous amount of different buffs, uh, tons of spells. I mean, things that give him 60% ward save. He is effectively infinite regeneration. And Isabella is essentially the same thing. Fortunately, it looks like they're just gonna sit here and wait for our reinforcements to come in, which is pretty great, cause you know, it's our reinforcements are tanks. Oh my God, okay. I was moving these spearmen up in an attempt to try and goad Vlad into, oh, Oh yeah, well, I was trying to use up some of his magic. I didn't think he would immediately destroy the unit. Oh, you know, go, go back in there. I'm sure it'll be fine. I, I think we just blew through all of their winds of magic just like that. And all I had to do was sacrifice a 300. Oh, never mind. All right, well, what I can do is, oh, well, let Carl Franz get hit by a spirit leech, a storm of the nut. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't know how strong Isabella is. Okay, Isabella, Isabella's pretty strong. What is happening? Why do they have so many of this one ability? Carl Franz, run. Oh, wait, this isn't Isabella. God, I could beat the absolute crap out of them. Yeah, this this is not gonna be a close fight. Mr. Franz fighting some random vampire spellcaster. Eh, okay. Uh well, I wasn't expecting Carl to literally die to 80 storms cast on top of him. So it looks like this fight is just gonna be Vlad and Isabella versus probably our entire army. The Bright Wizard is a nice addition, but this is uh, this is actually gonna make things a lot closer than I thought they would be. Well, it looks like it's time for the typical fight versus Vlad. Vlad, which is every single one of his units dies except for Vlad. And now we will have to probably grind out the entirety of the fight just versus him. Yeah, so we got Isabella over here who's fighting her own mosh pit of units. And then we got Vlad who's just fighting the entirety of our army. Multiple units of unbreakable grain swords. And you know, I'm still not even so confident we could kill him. Okay, thank God. Isabella is dead over here. And Vlad, oh my God, Vlad got hit by army losses. That is so amazing because we were not gonna kill him without that. <laughs> If he actually remained unbreakable through the entire fight, I don't think we would have won. Franz died and he got zero kills. I wasn't expecting them to have like eight charges of an anti-air attack. Okay, luckily we can just auto resolve to finish him off, which is fantastic. Uh, oh my God, this is the thing I hate about Vlad. I killed him last turn, but because of all of his bonuses to recovery time, he's, he's just immediately back the next turn. I have to auto resolve this because I don't think I killed Vlad in any other way. He alone may be able to kill this entire army. Oh my god, they resurrected and they're back. At least we did recruit a couple of, you know, grenade launcher units, which are, eh, they're, they're okay. On second thought, it turns out these grenade launchers are actually a lot better than I thought they were, especially against undead. Turns out when they've literally only got one group of cavalry units and barely one at that, we could probably just kite them into oblivion and eventually kill them. Okay, finally, this should be one of our last battles against Vlad. I think we could just immediately wipe him out. We just have to take out his castle and that will be the entire area of what? Slovenia? Under our control. Okay, there is Castle Drakenhof. Del well, we'll just occupy that and we can now appoint an elector count of Dr Sylvania. Okay, and now finally we can also start building something in our Nuln province, the Nuln Cannon Foundry, which is going to give us access to all of the really good empires. Empire units. I mean, I've just been defeating everyone with these massive droves of spearmen that are just juiced to the gills with Karl Franz's holy vibes. All right, finally, last battle, and Vlad should be dead now. Now, did, 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 did. 
Now, there we go. Whoa, okay. Uh, another unexpected battle where the ogres have come down from the mountains and are trying to beat down Franz. I sincerely don't think this will work for them. All right, yeah, this this isn't working out so great. I mean, Carl Franz is up to 1,000 weapon strength with a bonus versus large of 16, and their leader is being pummeled into Kingdom Come. Oh, and there is the regiment of renown I've been waiting for, the Sunmaker and the Black Lions. So the Sunmaker is a Hellstorm rocket battery, and Hellstorm rocket batteries have this special ability, which is just shooting a bajillion missiles. Oh, I didn't even realize that we just got our short victory campaign complete. But obviously, a short victory campaign does not mean that we have taken over the rest of the Empire, which means we still have a bit more to go. I, I don't know if something changed in the game recently, but I feel like the AI has this entire campaign just been smacking their head into a brick wall, fully aware that I could click a button and they lose their entire army. Oh yeah, they just fucking died! <laughs> I was about to be like, all right, Carl, go take back Steingart. No, no, the, the entire army must have tripped on a banana peel and fell into the Mariana Trench. Well, this is the very last Empire faction that is actually still, well, not dead. And now they are dead. Technically, all I have left is this one remaining army of Talbekaland. And then I believe if I go to my Electoral Machinations, yeah, there's literally only two factions. I don't know what happens when everyone runs out. It's just me, but eh, we'll see. Of course, at, at the very next turn, they're asking me for a peace treaty. I, I don't think so. Okay, now here is the final Empire army. And you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna actually fight this one out as well. I feel like it's the least we can do for all Colt Herwig, the literal last survivor of my genocidal rampage against, well, humankind. Of course, the other reason why I wanted to fight him as well is so that I can use, you know, the five Hellstorm rocket batteries we have. So when we go ahead and just fire all of them, I love it. It's the power of democracy all over again. Also missing completely, but if we can shoot more missiles than you have people, chances are we could win. I've also done my part to make Carl Franz even more of a world beater, so we'll just have him walk on it here. It doesn't really matter if he's surrounded. He he surrounds everyone with his presence. I mean, the artillery helps as well. See, this is the part of the Empire campaign where things start to get really fun, since I could just field entire armies of artillery. Yeah, that might be a little bit of overkill for a shattered unit with 10 guys left in it. But what's really overkill is having Carl Franz just kill the entire army. I mean, it's not even all that difficult to get him up to 113 speed, 104 melee attacks, 72 melee defense, and about a thousand weapon strength. Wait, I took zero losses? And Carl Franz is at full health? That is a successful battle. For your consideration, Sigma. So now that Talbekaland is gone, I can just call it, wait, colonize. They, they were just squatting in ruins? Seems on brand. But with Talbekaland gone, that means that we have literally, <laughs> it's just Carl Franz. Wait, <laughs> wait, the game is not meant for this. I'm at war with myself. I'm military allies with myself. Apparently I'm a vassal with myself. And I am my own defensive ally. Wait, I'm using influence to improve relations. That's a high elf mechanic. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna save before I do this. I don't wanna accidentally crash the game. Oh no, I saved and it broke the whole thing. Now I can't even use it. I'm not gonna lie. The two Carl Franzes on the left and the right look like they have multiple restraining orders. Oh yeah, I'm also doing all of Franz's quest battles right about now because I figured, you know, this is probably about time and... Yeah, if it's any indication, this is pretty much how all of them have been going. Okay, so by this point, I have just about every single provincial capital to get an elector in all the provinces. Ignore the, um... I mean, you know, some of the weird parts. All I need is Wolfenburg from Dreitsche and Castle Drakenhof, and then we will have every single elector in the empire. So if I could defeat Azag here, we will be able to take Castle Drakenhof most likely this turn. I can actually lightning strike, and that entire Wa army he's got following around doesn't do anything. Man, lightning strike is so good. Now, Azag's army is pretty tough. I mean, it's mostly trolls. Let's see, stone trolls. Uh, Azag himself is 
flying on a pretty scary dragon, a wyvern if you want to get technical. But given my army is five groups of just blot out the sun with missile launchers, three groups of unbreakable great swords, and Carl Franz all the ways up here, Azag is about to get his bomb absolutely torn into shreds. Yeah, I mean, Carl's now rocking the 116 melee attack, and Azag is at 63. And Carl is poisoned. Oh, and, and you know, those really heavily armored black orcs are not so good against rocket launchers uh, or fireballs. All right, I guess Azag decided enough was enough, and he is going to fly into my hand gunners over here and probably get shot to death. Okay, no, my hand gunners are... Wait, what are my health store rockets do... Okay. I guess it's working. I don't think these things are designed to shoot air units, but you know, if it works, it works. That would just hit Carl. All right, well, it should only be fitting that Azag's death is probably going to come because I am launching every single one of my Hellstorm rocket batteries at him. And again, you guys are hitting Carl and no one else. Alternatively, I am just going to throw a fireball at him and hope that he dies. Yes, that, that worked. All right, and with beating Azag, now we can just come over to the province and auto-resolve this. I, I really don't care that I'm going to lose a bunch of units. Occupying Castle Drakenhof, which means now we have gotten Slovenia, so I can come and appoint a new... Let's just... Let's just hire some random dude off the street. Yeah, you, you, you look like you're good enough. Congrats, you are now the leader of all of Slovenia. And for our very final province over here, which is Wolfenburg. Unfortunately, it is owned by Dreicha, and that is, um, that's not an army I want to fight. But I do have one army right over here next to Wolfenburg, which means I'm just gonna buy it from her. I will give you one random settlement and $18,000. Also, on a more minor note, I will break every single trade agreement, non-aggression pact, and military alliance with every faction I've ever made it with. Thanks for the settlement. So with Wolfenburg, now I can pull another random homeless uh, flagellant off the street, and congratulations, you are now the arch lector of uh, whatever province this is, which means I now control everything. All of the elector counts are arch warrior priests, so you know, we're just praying away. We we've essentially created a new theocratic empire. Wait, I didn't even even though there was a summon elector counts option to replenish my troops. Not like it matters because I've literally got like five of these emperor's rat steam tanks spread around my armies. And I guess if I wanted to, I could just recruit another, what, I've got 34k? So another like 17? But in the midst of a civil war, I have done it. We have united the empire once and for all in a beautiful glory. Uh, you can ignore the fact that ogres are invading from the south. I'm pretty sure Azag is making another 20 stack over here. Uh, most of the land is actually owned by Dreicha still. Festus is plaguing most of the north. I think Norska owns this part. The entire left side is owned by wood elves, and the province right next to our capital is controlled by dwarves. My economy is decimated, and so is my imperial authority. Well, I'm sure Carl is looking around right now, wondering how in the hells are we gonna fix this? And of course, my dear Carl, there is no way.